Ireland. Within a couple of hundred years, they had spread their influence and control over most of the country. And in this district here in Kerry, their influence extended all over North Kerry and down as far as the River Main, which is just a few miles from us here at Castle Main. Now, the North Kerry then came to be ruled by the Fitzgeralds. And here in the south, at the back, where Maclecuddy Weeks and Canmare and West Cork are, that was all under the influence and suzerainty of the McCarthy Moor. Now, the point is that the Lown Valley, just down here near us, is a very good stretch of rich land. And the Geraldines, who controlled North Kerry, wanted to gain control of this valley as well. So they built a castle here in Kilorogram, and that was owned later on in the year 1613 by a landlord called Jenkin Conway. Now at that time, at the start of the 17th century, during feudal times generally, no fair could be held in any part of the Norman kingdoms except by charter from the king. So in the year 1613, Jenkin Conway of the castle here got permission from the king of England to hold a fair here in Kilorga. And that was the start of this fair that we have here now. We know nothing at all as to why a goat is put up here, but we do know that an animal was often exposed at fairs in both Ireland and other countries as a symbol. You see, when a fair was allowed to be held by charter, a symbol was always put up to mark the time at which the fair might open. And this symbol was allowed to remain up for the whole extent of the fair. Now here in Ireland we know of four fairs altogether where an animal was exposed, like the puck goat here. In Capa White in County Tipperary, in Mullinavat in County Kilkenny, and at Green Castle near Carlingford in County Down. So we see that the exposure of an animal at a fair is not something unique. My name is Eileen Moriarty and I live in Cologne. This is my first time being the Queen. And how did Eileen become Queen? Well, I told my daddy that um, I, if I don't be Queen this year, I, I will never be the Queen. And I, I suppose that is how I was the Queen. The first day of Puck is called the Gathering Day. The second is the Fair Day proper, while the third and final day is known as Scattering Day. The procession and coronation take place in the evening of gathering day. Even the puck stand itself is black with spectators. Friends, no doubt, of the committee. The climax of this carefully planned ritual is at hand. You might think it isn't far removed, maybe, from the pagan festivals of Lunasa, when crowds went at harvest time up to the tops of the mountains to celebrate their age-old gods. Some of these Lunasa feasts, like Crow Patrick, became Christian pilgrimages. Others, like the one associated with a hamlet called Kilgobnet, very near Kilorglan, have disappeared without trace. If Puck Fair had a pre-Christian origin, then Kilgobnet was where it all began. But the most recent academic opinion is that Puck Fair has no pagan roots and that, as Dr. O'Sullivan has said, it doesn't go back beyond Norman times. All stand by as strong-armed men prepare to hoist Puck to his glory. This is the moment thousands have gathered to witness.
here he stands at last, all set for three days of solitary grandeur. And it's hurrah for the puck so gay, for he's the powerful fella. Wind and rain don't touch his tail, for his thick hair is long and yellow. But there's little time for ballad and verse during the cattle fair of the second day. Puck fair, after all, is basically a fair, the biggest cattle and horse fair in Kerry. Bargains are struck by hard-minded men. Business must come before revelry. who founded the fair down to the farmers who keep it alive to this day. Now, if the right bargains have been struck, there might be some cash to spare, and there's no shortage of ways to spend it or lose it. All the barkers and spielers of the fairground are here. The roulette men, as busy as any. It's not the wildest imaginable gambling, but maybe there's a hint of recklessness here, some slight suggestion of Puck's legendary spirit. You can pick or choose, or select any prize you like. You have four numbers again for sixpence. On this American bazaar, you can pick or choose, or you can select any prize you like. Now, any prize or article that you like off of the table board or so. Now, who wants this lot? Anybody here? Four? I've got four lots here again. Four lots. Much good. Fine talk will do you if you haven't got money to spend. If, for instance, the pig fair has gone against you and you're left with a litter of bonhams whose profit would have paid for the new coat your wife wants or paid the overdue installments on the tractor, there's no romance in pigs, but there's good money in bacon. The patient cart horses, with luck, won't have to take back the pigs they brought into Puck, but they might have to wait until their farmer owners have had a pint or two, or maybe now a, a turn on the helter skelter,
just the tradition of fun and merriment, but there's still another business aspect of Puck at the horse fair, and a good horse fair it is too. Horse tanglers and farmers meet, there'll be Sheridans there, the greatest horse dealers of them all. They'll all be there, all the men who can really judge a good animal. You won't get it. Fifty pounds will be the price. Go on. You'll divide ten. You'll divide ten there with him. Sixty-five. Fifty-five. I'll give him fifty. No good. No good. No. Sixty pounds will be the price. Can we give him sixty pounds? Sixty. Sixty pounds. Then I'll give him a fiver for luck. You'll give him a fiver for luck and give over that. Give him a fiver for luck. Sixty-five pounds. Fifty-five, you'll give me the fiver out. Yeah, well, I give him You'll give her a fiver back out of that. That'll be the price of fifty-five pounds. Come on, ma'am, you'll take him. I'll give him fifty-five in the fiver out. Go on, give him a fiver. Go on, give him a fiver. Go on, give him a fiver. Puck Fair wouldn't be Puck Fair without its tinkers. They come to Kilorglan from all over Ireland and give Puck the name of being as much a tinker festival as anything else. Until recently, they brought their tents and caravans right into the town until the county council banned them. Well, um, I am a member of the local committee of Puck Fair and a member of the Kerry County Council. Uh, the councils uh, stand on this uh, issue of the Innitons parked on the bridge and uh, on the side of the Killarney Road uh, were uh, very clearly defined in 1960. Due to representations made by the people of this town to the county council, the county medical officer of health at that time uh, investigated uh, the hygienic conditions under which these people lived and uh, uh, reported back to the council that they were indeed very unsatisfactory. Uh, after that, the county engineer uh, investigated the traffic conditions and uh, they were very chaotic uh, before, during and after Puck. Especially during Puck when you had uh, all these caravans along the side of the road and kids liable to run across the road at any particular time, like, you know, no control kept over them very much. Uh, it was highly dangerous. Uh, a motion came up under the normal um, uh, notice of motion at the council asking that uh, a, a prohibition area be set up and this was done in um, late 1960 I think it was. Uh, it was done under the um, local government uh, Sanitary Services Act of 1948 and uh, this prohibition order uh, uh, prohibited the erection of temporary dwellings within three quarters of a mile of the Garda barracks in any direction around town. And how do the travelling people feel about being treated as second-class citizens? Uh, the name is Michael O'Brien. I'm a horse dealer. And this fair has a big hindrance to us with the past five years. At the moment now, we have already been put up on the old railway grounds in Kilargla. And uh, from there, any other passing public, is the, well, they don't see much of the caravan or even what is going on. There is no very little at all if there is any caravan to be seen. And uh, it may not appear that way as towards the people of Killardlin because they know they are there. But it can appear in many thousand ways to the foreigner, which is visiting those places during those occasions. So we would be grateful to the people of Killardlin or to anybody which would come in there that to do as to bring back this American site to the bridge of Killardlin as we want it to be at. And what about local residents? How do they feel? The Norman family of Sir Desmond Fitzmaurice have lived round Kiloglan for 700 years. You'll see their caravans and gay colours lining, bordering the River Loun, and they were all over the place. Sometimes almost too much so. For instance, um, you might wake up one morning and find 20 horses in a field of turnips. Well, that wasn't, of course, quite so popular, but um, I suppose really the damage that was done might have been exaggerated. 
But in a way, I'm sorry to see so few tinkers now in, at Park Fair because they were undoubtedly a very colourful feature of the place. Well, the initums or the tinkers, as we uh, call them uh, more often, they, they, they are colourful, colourful enough. They did have very colourful periods. Uh, the, the big problem with them is that uh, they are uh, they tend to be a little bit on the unhygienic side, like, and um, the local committee, anyway, feel that uh, we'd like to bring the Puck Fair into modern ideas. <laughs> If you're too young to be interested in dancing, the wheel of fortune still turns on into the night. If you fancy ice cream, it's a rare delicacy at 3 a.m., but there is a more popular way of cooling off. There's not, in fact, much drunkenness. The town's publicans may make a fortune, but it doesn't go to their heads. I'm a publican for all the last 50 years. My people in business before me. Public houses in Glasgow are open for the three days and three nights above fair. No closing. That exemption has been granted for years and years and years. There's never been any objection to it. And of course it suits us down to the ground because we are able to lay out our premises for a three day and three night trade. We employ a good many hands and our customers are really well cared for. From the point of view of business, puck is a very big matter to people in the town. Publicans and shopkeepers. Generally speaking, the average pub would turn over as much for the three nights of puck, three days and three nights of puck. I see what turn over between five to six weeks normally. And now there's one thing about Puck Fair. Nobody ever complained about overcharging in Puck Fair. We don't add a penny extra for the three days of the fair to our ordinary prices. Our prices are the same throughout the fair as they are the whole year round. And I think most of the customers appreciate that. The principal reason that we don't charge any extra prices in Puck Fair is that there's an old tradition there that's going on so long that we don't think it's necessary to do it at all. We get a meal in the town today, the same as you'll get it in the middle of winter. It'll be the same price. And it's the same with the pubs. There's no such thing as an extra penny put on anything. And I think our customers appreciate that very, very much. Well, I've often asked myself the question, what brings people to Puck and people who come always say they'll come back again. I don't know what the attraction is, but there is a different attraction. Kilorglan has no factories and just one industry, Puck Fair. It was there before any of us remember, and from the looks of things, King Puck will reign at Kilorglan for many a year to come.